environmental and industry leadership awards during his tenure. Greg Boyce is the only CEO named among the very finest executives this past year in both the energy and mining industries. Thank you, Dennis, and I'm honored to be among members of this Congress who are creating solutions to advance the human condition. I began with a video because the face of energy poverty is stark and all too human. Today I call on all of us to leave the comfort of our offices and living rooms and enter the villages of sub-Saharan Africa, Asia, and elsewhere, where families seek electricity for the most basic needs clean water, warmth, and light. I submit that the greatest crisis we confront in the 21st century is not a future environmental crisis predicted by computer models, but a human crisis today, fully within our power to solve. I believe for too long, too many have been focused on the wrong end game. So I begin with this challenge. When you leave this Congress, carry with you the commitment that you do all you can to eliminate global energy poverty and energy inequality by 2050. For every person or agency who has voiced a 2050 greenhouse goal, I believe we need 10 people and policy bodies working toward the goal of broad energy access to reduce global poverty. Study after study and pure common sense tells us that access to electricity helps people live longer and better. Yet each year, we lose more than one and a half million people to the effects of energy poverty. We can no longer turn our heads from these brutal statistics. So we as a world need to, I believe, reset our priorities. Eliminating energy poverty must be our job number one. And the goal, electricity access for all by 2050. We also must advance all energy forms for long-term access. Coal is the only base load fuel with the scale, abundance, reliability, and cost profile to make this goal a reality. Lifespans increase as electricity access grows, and economies increase as coal fuel power grows. Now this is the global economic miracle that has been powered by coal, past, present, and I believe the future. A rapid rise in world's use of coal-fueled electricity mirrors the rise in global GDP. From 1970 to 2010, global GDP increased 250% fueled by coal. Now when we talk about alleviating global energy poverty, there could be no greater example than China, which offers an unrivaled model for the enormous strength of coal to empower people and economies. And coal is electricity. Coal is the only sustainable fuel with the scale to meet the primary energy needs of the world's rising populations and economies. That coal has been the fastest growing fuel for the past 10 years. Global coal use expanded nearly 50% in the past decade, which speaks to the enormous appetite 
of the world's fastest growing economies. Now the world has trillions of tons of coal which make up 60% of our global energy resources and we will use them all. Reserves are large and diverse, spanning nations on every major continent. About 90% of coal's 3 billion tons of demand growth by 2030 will come from emerging Asia. Coal fuel generation is expected to grow two and a half times in China, three and a half times in India by 2030. No other resource comes close to the power of coal. If you looked at replacing coal with alternatives, the numbers don't add up. It would take 1,800 times more solar deployed than we have today. And of course, a yet to be invented storage technology for the, when the sun doesn't shine. It would take two and a half million wind turbines in constant wind. 1,150 nuclear plants. An additional 70 TCF per year of natural gas, or three times the production of Russia or 2,250 large hydroelectric plants. Now, all of these sources are important. In fact, all sources of energy and energy efficiency are important. But yet, they cannot come close to matching the scale of coal. The Peabody Plan, then, in summary, calls for five action items. Number one, we want to work to eliminate energy poverty and propel global economies by ensuring that at least half of new generation is fueled by coal, the dominant global baseload source of power. Two, we want to replace these 1,000 gigawatts of traditional coal plants with advanced coal technologies. Supercritical and ultra-supercritical super critical plants are more efficient, and the stimulus this would provide would add trillions of dollars of benefit, millions of jobs, and significant emissions reductions now. Three, we want to develop at least 80 or 100 major CCS projects around the world that capture, store, or beneficially reuse carbon dioxide from coal-based plants within the next 10 years. This complements the IEA's goal of deploying more than 2,000 projects by mid-century. Number four, we want to deploy significant coal to gas, coal to chemicals, and coal to liquid projects around the world over the next 10 years. Such plants are in heavy development in China, and doing so elsewhere will reduce reliance on oil and natural gas. And finally, we want to commercialize and deploy next generation clean coal technologies to achieve near zero emissions. So Peabody's plan would go far to eliminate energy poverty and energy inequality and ensure full global access to electricity by 2050. Energy is life, and let us put people first by putting energy first for the people of the world. Thank you very much for your attention today.